Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast, Coffee Break Sessions, presented by Strategic Treasure. The show where we cover foundational topics and core treasury issues in about the same amount of time it takes you to drink your cup of coffee. I'll be your host, Jonathan, media production specialist here at Strategic Treasure. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I am here with Paul Galloway. We are recording at AFP in person. Welcome back to the show, Paul. It's been a little while since you've been on. Yeah, it has been. I'm glad to be back. Cool. Today on the Coffee Break Sessions, we're going to be talking a little bit about brokered CDs. So if you want to start us off with just telling the listeners what are brokered CDs? Yeah, so John, most people, when you talk about CDs, they might think about they go down to the local bank or credit union and uh, they make an investment in a traditional, what I call a traditional CD. And so banks offer certificates of deposit as a way to uh, get cash in the door to use for lending practices. And so that's an incentive is, hey, if you bring in cash invested in a CD, we're going to take that cash and we're going to invest it in the community, perhaps, in the form of loans, and we're going to get some kind of return back from that. Well, we're going to share the return with you in terms of an interest rate. And so that's kind of how they determine where they're going to set the interest rates. That's so they're hoping that they're going to be able to, with expenses and uh, the loan rate, outpace what they're going to pay you and make some money at the same time. So when it comes to like a broker CD, it's the same concept. It is a certificate of deposit, but these are actually traded through a brokerage firm. And so their CDs are traded in the secondary market, uh, a little bit different than just investing in a CD uh, at your local bank, the way I had termed it as a traditional CD. You went into how they're different than your traditional CDs that you're going to buy as an individual. What's the process of purchasing a broker CD? And who are they for? Yeah, so uh, broker CDs can be for individuals or institutions, companies, you know, or other organizations that are looking to make an investment with their cash. The way that you do that is you need to set up a brokerage account if you don't already have one so that you can actually trade the CDs because they are traded across an exchange in the second market, secondary market, and you need a broker or broker house, broker dealer in order to uh, execute those transactions. Uh, a great example of uh, use of broker CDs is uh, I sit on finance council and foundation board for my church and we make investments in broker CDs for our church. Part of the rationale behind doing that is that we wanted to make sure that we were spreading amongst different banks' investments instead of going to a bunch of individual local banks to get different CDs so that we're making sure we're covered for FDIC insurance, which is 250000 That's the max of the coverage. Anything above that, yeah, the potential to to lose money. So we decided to go through a brokerage house to be able to do that instead of going to a bunch of different banks. Okay, so there is more protection with a brokered CD. Well, there can be. You still have to make sure that you adhere to your limits in terms of the FDIC coverage itself. But with a brokered CD, you are taking risk of market volatility as rates change or uh, demand for CDs, you know, in particular brokered CDs may change as well. If a bank's feeling pressure, you may uh, potentially have uh, some risks associated with loss of value. And so there's two pieces that you're trying to get out of a CD. One, you're trying to get the full return of your principal. Say I invest $100,000 on a broker CD, I get an interest rate also tied to that. Well, I want to make sure I get both those back. I want, I, want, I want to get the full amount of my interest. I want to get back my principal associated with it. So you're, you're wanting to get both of those pieces back. Yeah, but yeah. trading in the secondary market, kind of like a bond, uh, the value can change. And there could be um, breakup fees associated with it as well. Okay. A breakup fee, is that is that kind of like Craig was mentioning? With a regular CD, you would... 
if you break the contract early, you'd lose some of your interest and possibly some of your principal. Is that kind of the same idea? Yeah, same idea. Okay. Is there anything different as far as your standard CD rules, say like the breaking your contract early, um, time limits? Is it all kind of the same from regular CDs to brokered CDs? Yeah, generally they're they're the same, but um, you know there can be uh, features associated with broker CDs that. Um, you might not get with your traditional CD at your bank or credit union that you invest in. Um, they can be callable. There's a call feature that allows the bank to uh, repay the funds back to the investor. So there may be rationale as to why they're doing that changes in rates or there's something else that's going on where they want to uh, return that capital back to the investor and so they may call that. Uh, what are some of the other risks that are associated with brokered CDs? Yeah, the, the, the main risks, we kind of talked about most of them, but uh, you know, it's when you make an investment in a CD, you are making an investment in that bank. And so you're banking on that the credit worthiness, you know, we'll just use that as the term, credit worthiness of that bank is good. That they're going to take deposits that they receive in, and they're going to, for lack of a better term, I'll call it, it make investments in the form of loans. They go out and they loan money to individuals or to businesses. They're banking on that those businesses that they're making these investments in and those individuals will repay their loans and make their payments in a timely manner and not default on those. Sometimes they can make these investments in riskier loans. And so you heard about some of the disruption in the U.S. We have banks that went under. When you looked at the balance sheet of these banks, if you'd spent some time looking at the underlying investments that they made, the loans, their loan portfolio, you would, would have found that there was some risk associated, well, actually quite a bit of risk for uh, some of them, like Silicon Valley, there was a lot of risk that was on the balance sheet that wasn't being taken into account because of the way that they had to report. But somebody had dug into it and found out, oh, they got a bunch of risky loans. And what happens with banks is that if there's any kind of mistrust along the way, uh, it can totally damage the reputation of the bank and you can get a run on the bank, meaning all the depositors go to the bank to get their deposits back because they're worried that they're gonna lose it. Likewise, with a broker CD, you're taking that on that credit of that bank that you're making the investment in. So it's important to ensure from an investor standpoint that if something like that happens, that there is FDIC coverage to ensure that my deposit is safe. Yeah, yeah, you think of CDs as the most standard, safe investment you can make, but there is still some risk there. There is. It's not like investing in treasuries, and that is the ultimate safe haven, is making investments in treasury bills or treasury notes. That's the ultimate safe haven. That is viewed as the least risky investment that we can make um, is doing that. Okay. We'll have to do a uh, coffee break session on the safest and the most unsafe investments you can make. Yeah, make note. <laughs> uh, so what happens at the maturity of the brokered CD? Yeah, so what happens at the maturity of the broker CD is you get two things. You get your principal balance back to you. So that $100,000 we talked about in the example earlier, you get that back. But you also get interest. So that's agreed upon terms associated with the CD. Typically, uh, CDs are fixed rate investments, meaning you've agreed to terms of X number of months, you get this interest rate over that period. That gets all paid back to you, principal plus the interest. Yeah. And then are you, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but are you able to sell your brokered CDs? You are. You can sell those in um, the open market. They are tradable uh, securities. And that's why you have to set up a brokerage account and go through a broker dealer uh, to buy or sell those uh, CDs. So if you buy it at 12 month term, you could sell it in three months if you wanted to? Absolutely. Any fees? Yeah, there'll be broker fee. There, the brokerage house will charge you fees. Um, there is potential risk that your value of that CD, you may get less or more principal back potentially. 
uh, depending on what's going on in the market. Since it is tradable, the value of those CDs can move. It sounds to me like it being tradable is one of the big benefits of a brokered CD. Yeah, it absolutely can be. Cool. Anything else you want to add about brokered CDs for the listeners? When you start making consideration in terms of the investment portfolio that you have, just make sure you understand the risks associated with making these transactions, these trades, and have a mechanism for ensuring that you have coverage of FDIC, making sure you understand the underlying risks associated with trading broker CDs, and understand the credit worthiness of the bank that you're making an investment in. I got one more question actually. Is brokered CD as popular or more popular to purchase than just a regular CD from your bank or is, are they not linked? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that, but I would say that they are equally popular in general because they are they're, they're different ways to make the investments. Most people are acclimated to traditional but people that understand that they can do uh, brokered CDs, you know, that type of investment uh, becomes common, commonplace for some individuals, but also for institutions. Like I use the example of my church. We make investments in brokered CDs. Cool. Well, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts. In two weeks, tune back in. We're going to be talking about callable CDs. So thanks for your thoughts and uh, sharing this information, Paul. Yeah, you bet, John. Thanks for having me. This podcast is provided for informational purposes only, and statements made by Strategic Treasurer LLC on this podcast are not intended as legal, business, consulting, or tax advice. For more information, visit and bookmark strategictreasurer.com.